Attorney General's office for, for some reason, and there was something in that case that said, um, I think there was maybe on appeal, something was raised about the legitimacy of the Attorney General's office prosecuting a case um, instead of the Commonwealth actually prosecuting it. And the Supreme Court had said it's the, the better practice for the Attorney General's office to make a record of its authority to prosecute an indictment. I didn't think that that had been done yet in this case and that you might want to do so. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, of course, this case came to the Attorney General's office through the, um, under Chapter 15, the Commonwealth Attorney recused uh, in writing and the Attorney General under the authority of Chapter 15 uh, has the authority then to uh, prosecute the case, either as keep the case in-house, which was done in this matter, or to call on another Commonwealth attorney to assume jurisdiction. So I, I believe that the letter of, uh, the letter sent to Commonwealth attorney Wine is in the record. If not, uh, we'll make sure it's uh, as soon as possible to have that filed in the record and All the right. letter from the attorney general, the letter from the AG's office, assuming jurisdiction. We'll, right. we'll make sure that's filed in the record. I don't know that I see it here currently, but um, I will look further and see. I, I, I have your notice of entry of appearance, um, but it doesn't really give the basis for why you're entering the okay. appearance. So, uh, yes, but yes. You're right. There may be other things that you have filed, and I'll, I'll take a closer look at the file. Mr. Matthews, did you have any questions about that at all? No, I do not, Judge. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so, Ms. Whaley, was that all you felt like you needed to put on the record in terms of um, bringing the court up to date? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Matthews? Um, Your Honor, I've been furnished with, as Ms. Whaley characterized it, a voluminous amount of discovery. Um, I've made it through that discovery, and um, we're ready to go, basically. All right, and when you say ready to go, um, are you saying you're ready to set a trial date? Um, I think so. I, you know, there's the discovery has been provided. Um, I don't have any questions about it, and I don't think there are any um, outstanding procedural issues at this point. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Whaley, are you ready to, uh, for the court to we, set a trial? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, provided uh, we uh, could work around currently scheduled uh, other proceedings that we may have scheduled. And I don't know what the court's calendar is so but we are ready we can set a trial date all right your um, honor I, if i may interject i i do intend to file um at some point a petition to change the venue of the trial and i don't know how the court would plan to proceed on handling that um <clears throat> well i think we would have to schedule a hearing um once you once you file that motion do you know when yes. you'll be filing? Do you know when you'll be filing that, Mr. Matthews? Well, I was kind of waiting to see what we did today, as far as what we're talking about in terms of scheduling a trial. Okay. Well, obviously, with COVID, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to know. Um, I know that the Chief Justice has said in um, one of the more recent orders um, from the Supreme Court that we should be able to start trying cases in April. Um, now that date has been changed a couple of times with the Supreme Court's orders. I'm not terribly optimistic that this spring is going to be able to, uh, that we'll be able to actually have trials. Um, but you all can tell me when you think you would want me to start looking for a trial date. Um, and Ms. Whaley, could you possibly, if you could give me an idea of how long you think the um, prosecution's case would take to try? Uh, ex excluding jury selection. That's fine. I would, I would, uh, 
I would anticipate three to four days for the Commonwealth case. Okay, thank you. All right, that gives me an idea. All right, um, well, let's see. Do you want me to start looking in the summer? Do you want me to start looking in the fall? Ms. Whaley, do you have- would ask, yes, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you didn't, go ahead. We would ask that the court start looking uh, the week of July 19th and and from there out. Okay. So our, our prosecutors have other trials scheduled through May June and into the 1st of July. Okay, that's fine. What about you, Mr. Matthews? Uh, Judge, I will be gone that last week of July. Um, okay. Beyond that, um, I'm fine. All right. All right, let's see what we have. Other, well, I, I do have a week-long trial set beginning August 9th, allegedly. August but again, oh, yeah. that's... Uh, How about August 31st? That works for me. Ms. Zakaria, do you have any trials set at that time? No, that works for me as well. Uh, that'll be fine for me. And it works for me. All right. Well, that was easy. All right, August 31st, uh, 10 o'clock to start the jury trial. And then, um, so Mr. Matthews, now having that date in place, um, when can I expect to see your motion regarding to you? Um, I would think that probably within the next two weeks. In the next two weeks, all right. Yes. Um, Ms. Whaley, do you want me to go ahead and schedule a hearing on that? That would be or, fine. Or do you wanna to wait to see the motion first before we get the hearing date? I think we can go ahead and set a date. All right. I think I would like to do that hearing in person, if you all feel comfortable doing that. Uh, I would much prefer that, Judge. Ms. Whaley? Yes, we would. Yes, we would prefer in person. All right. How about... Thursday, March the 25th at 1.30? Uh, under the <clears throat> Supreme Court order, would that in person be permitted before April 1? I think so. I mean, I think the jury trials are April 1. I think the court on its, uh, the trial courts on their own can make a determination of necessity for in person. But if you want me to wait until April, I can do that, if you'd feel more comfortable. I, as long as the court, um, as long as we, you know, we're in compliance with the, the Supreme Court's order, that's fine, that's fine, the 25th. Yes, we'll, we'll obviously still um, maintain social distancing in the courtroom um, as we're conducting this and limit the number of people who can actually be in the courtroom. So, all right, um, Mr. Matthews, does that work for you? Yes. All right, March 25th at 1.30 for the hearing regarding change of venue. And uh, Mr. Matthews, I don't know if you, how much thought you've given to this, but have you, do you have a county in mind that you are asking the court to change venue to? Well, or, and judge, if you don't want to say that, that's fine. Well, I, I don't have a specific county, but I believe that the statute says it should be an adjacent county, um, unless that is not feasible also. And then I assume any county in the state is is open. All right. Uh, from I my had... perspective, I'd love to have it up here in northern Kentucky. Well, I can understand why you would prefer that, Mr. Matthews. Um, when, when I was a trial attorney, I had a case that was the venue was changed. Now we did not go to an adjacent county um, because of media coverage that you know, would have affected adjacent counties to Jefferson. And we ended up trying the case in uh, Boyle County in the uh, Danville um, uh, circuit court. But okay, that, that, that gives me some idea of where you're, where you're thinking. 
All right. Um, anything else we need to address today, Ms. Whaley? I, I would just um, ask Ms. if Mr. Matthews then would intend to have it filed within the two weeks so that we would have ample time to respond. Sure. Um, yes, I am. I am awaiting some affidavits to go with the motion, but I think we can have that done within two weeks. Okay, sounds good. All right. Thank Anything you. else, Ms. Whaley? That's all, Your Honor. Mr. Matthews? Nothing further, Judge. All right. And um, Ms. Whaley, Mr. Matthews, I think I asked this of you one time uh, previously. If you would send me um, the names of the people that will be coming with you, um, any witnesses or you know, other attorneys, staff who would be coming with you to court on March 25th so that I can let the deputy sheriffs um, at the magnetometers know who to expect to come to circuit 13. And you could just email yes, that to my, um, to my administrative assistant, uh, Melinda, if you would. Okay. Yes, we will. We'll all right, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thanks, Judge. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Your Honor. Hey, this is Anita Wise at Channel 32. How do you think you will handle that with the media for an in-person? Uh, we could probably have one media person come in to the courtroom. Like like a pool, a pool shoot? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Who do I arrange that through? I think through the court administrator's office, okay. Carla Kreitman, okay. either Carla Kreitman or Angela uh, Bilowich. I know Carla. Okay. I will give her a call. Okay. Appreciate that yes. very much. All uh -huh. right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Judge, are you still on the line? I am. This is Brooke over at WHAS. I, I came into this just about a minute later than you guys started, so I just wanted to make sure um, the result of this meeting was just setting out that jury trial for August 31st with the hearing um, that you scheduled in March. And that was pretty much it, correct? Yes, yes. We just um, talked about the fact that all discovery had been turned over and um, things were moving along as expected. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Okay, thanks. 